Welcome, everyone, to the sixth round post fight show for UFC Fight Night Maya versus Usman, UFC Fight Night 129, UFC Santiago, UFC Chile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, UFC's latest card in Santiago, Chile, headed by a headlined by a welterweight top contender bout that uh, was kind of a sucky cap on an, a reasonable night of fights. What What could have been a Classic exceeded expectations if you stayed around and watched it. Meaningless fight card for the UFC. Oh, and man. kind of tanked right in the main event. Just just short of it. And yeah, man, yeah. I, I really wanted to see Usman go out and be like super dominant in a way where he got the finish. Mm -hmm. like watching him chase Maya around for the bulk of the fight, stuff and takedowns and you know, landing, like throwing volume, but not really connecting with anything substantial outside of that one punch he landed there in the fourth. Yep. So uh, it's like I see these these prospects compete against Maya, and like I'm never – I don't leave out of that fight with this feeling of, oh, man, like he really – he's really doing it now. It's like uh, you didn't look that great, honestly. Like dominant yeah. win, like you can't take that away from him. Dominant nope. win for Usman. But, like, come on. The dude's, like, over 40. You yeah, know? kind of like Covington. It's It still says something when you don't look like a significantly better kickboxer than Damian Maya. Like, it's one thing, you know, you're beating him, but it's also, like, you're not, you're not really whipping him. It's just the fact that if this fight's going to be dictated entirely by control and he can't take you down, then you're going to win the fight. Yeah. So it wasn't fun. I don't think yeah. anyone's going to sit there and say it was fun. No. Um, it was, I guess, what everyone expected was going to happen without mm -hmm. without a lot of the violence. Like, yeah. I really expected this to be just like the Covington fight without Maya having any moments on the feet. But Maya yeah. actually they landed a couple, a couple solid punches in there that, you know, definitely got the attention of Usman. But, you know, I actually gave the first round to Maya. I yep. thought it was uh, – you know, taking the back in that weird, funky, almost twister position was was pretty cool. And I wish the ref would have let it go a little longer, but it was pretty stale. And uh, after that, though, it was all Usman all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. It's kind of <clears> – <throat> it puts Usman in a better place in that now he's actually going to be like a person that people – somebody's going to have to beat to fight for the title because we've already got like – you know, two title fights lined up with Covington facing RDA and then the winner of that facing Woodley. And so Usman now with this win, he's going to be like that guy that the winner of Till versus Thompson is going to have to face or something like that. Which I love. <laughs> yeah, which, is, which is better for Usman than just not being able to get fights at all. But it does also mean that like, but he you can, can't. You can't possibly see the UFC being like, "Yeah, we're going to give Usman a title shot." Like coming off this win anytime in the near future. Usman could play that role where it's like, "I'm not facing anyone beneath me. Like it's only up from here." I, I could see him trying to lean on that, and I could also just see the UFC being like, "Okay, fine, whatever. You're not facing anyone. That's fine by us. We'll offer you a fight every six months." And <laughs> I really want to see him fight Covington. That's the fight I really yeah. want to see. Yeah. We won't get to see that, though, until after this RDA Covington Woodley thing washes out. Ah, that, that debacle. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, Maya just kind of looks like a, you know, I would, and it's the thing, I would still pick Maya against pretty much everybody else in the top 15 at welterweight, not named Kamaru Usman, like... You know, he already beat Jorge Masvidal not that long ago, and I'd pick him over Donald Cerrone. And, you know, like there, there are a couple other close fights where I might go back and forth and be like, oh, I don't know. Would I pick him, you know, pick him over, I'd pick him over Cowboy Oliveira and stuff like that? Like, uh, probably. I don't know, man. I think Oliveira would knock him the fuck out. Maybe, but uh, Oliveira would also be totally willing to just. Like get subbed, <laughs> get, yeah, get taken down and get into some wild grappling exchange. Very it's true. all because with my, it's all just like, can he get top control? If he can, and he's a really good wrestler, he's just not, you know, elite, near Olympic class level wrestler, which is what he's been facing. 
then he can't win. But if he can get you down, I, I, I would still take him over a lot of that division. It's just, it also feels like with him already talking about like, oh, my, ret- I might, I'm going to retire after this contract's up. It really does just feel like it's like, man, not really up to watch you in any more of these fights, you know? Yeah. It's it's crazy though for like how not good he is on the feet, how little damage he actually takes. Yeah, it's, he, it's, he, it's, he, it's, he fights defensively. He's gotten a lot more responsible with his striking than he used to be, and he knows how to. You know, he's not like he's not somebody after like oh, could, you think Usman puts him away like they did Sergio Marais. It's like Sergio Marais is so much more wide open to be hit hard than Damian Maya. And to be honest, I've seen Damian Maya a lot more tired than he was in this fight, which is crazy. Yeah. Like Usman we, just wasn't fighting at a very high pace. I mean, he says he broke his hands, and I don't doubt it. He looked like he was holding both his hands, and they both hurt after the fight. But it wasn't throwing any. And he wasn't throwing any punches before he broke his hands. And he really got away from the kicks. Like he yeah. opened up the fight with a lot of leg kicks that were really successful, and then completely bailed on that. Yeah. Once, once I think he tasted the grappling of Maya in the first round. Yep. He was a lot more reserved with his striking yep. after that. So, anyway. Kind of a crappy cap on this card that was fun in exactly the way that a lot of not very high-level fights are fun. Like, they you know, they they were all first-round finishes or three-round decisions. It's either, like, one person's just immediately way better than the other or neither guy is actually good enough to open up and take over a fight and uh yeah and we didn't get any shit shows no which was always great there were yeah. no heavyweights out here every, every fight was pretty technical throughout so yeah uh, not bad tatiana suarez absolutely just beat the brakes off alexa grasso which is a great show for suarez because grasso's legit you know she's not a bad fighter and she was a big step up from amanda cooper that was That's damn near big- flawless like, come out, get the takedown, hit some transitions, take the back, rear naked choke. Yeah. And, you know, people have been calling out, like, I think I saw somebody over on MMA fighting uh, their their feed t- saying, like, oh, I'd be up to see Suarez versus the Gadella uh, as far as a winner. It's like, let's just, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> along a little bit. Like, hold on. Hold on there, Joe Silva. We Can we, like, not do the whole thing that the UFC does every time they have somebody who looks good, which is, like, we'll give you two fights that you can win, and then we'll throw you in against, you know, some, Claudia Goodella or something, a former title challenger. Like, the highest I want to see her go would be Michelle Waterson. Yeah. Like, that's legit. But anything anything further up the ladder is, is – yeah. I mean, not I, saying she couldn't pull it out, but – no. It wouldn't be the matches I would go with. No. I, I can easily see her beating everyone ranked seven or below in that division, which is Michelle Watterson down. Yeah. But you start running up higher than that, and it's just like, why? You know, this person's been in the sport for a minute. Take a minute, you know? Yeah. And I um, mean, Flora, she only fought once in 2017. Yeah. So, I mean, she might not even fight again this year, but we'll see. Yeah, definitely. And she's she's only 27. She's just starting out. Got started in 2014. And she looked fucking great tonight. Yeah, she looked fucking great. And for Grasso, it's a tough loss. I think she she looked like a really top prospect coming up into the division before, you know, the division was getting populated by better and better athletes. And now it's sort of more like, yeah, she'll be a fun action fighter, but She's got a lot of a lot of things she's gonna have to work on. Yeah, this was a tough loss for her. Yeah. Uh, before that, Dominic Reyes beat Jared Cannonier. And we know one very, very important thing about Dominic Reyes now, which is that he's a legit finisher pretty much up and down the light heavyweight division. Because Cannonier is not the best fighter in the light heavyweight division by a mile. But he's a, relatively as tough as anybody else in that division. I mean, you go way up the line, and it's not like, you know, at this point, Glover Teixeira is notably got a better chin or Shogun Hua or OSP, you know? Yeah. I, th- I mean, th- this was crazy. I didn't yeah. expect this at all, honestly. 
No. I, I thought Cannoneer's chin would have held up a lot better than what it did. I mean, because yeah. it was really like just two uppercuts. Mm -hmm. That was basically what, what did him in here. The first one really hurt him and sent him, you know, wobbling. And then the second one made him face flop, which is always dangerous to see. Yeah. Great performance. I think, I, you know, it, it's a little bit too, um, unfortunately for Cannoneer, a bad look that part of the reason he got knocked out is that he fought the worst style of fight he fights, which is running in on the front foot, just kind of letting his hands go a lot and not looking to counter when he was, you know, doing the pressure counter thing and just kind of waiting for Reyes to throw the first punch and then stepping in with stuff. He was catching Reyes over and over again. But then the moment he started just getting wild and charging in, Reyes cut that little angle on him, landed that uppercut, and that was it. Yeah, and he, he picked up a walk-off TKO because yeah. it wasn't officially ruled a KO for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. Robbery! <laughs> Either way, I mean, that, that to me answers the big question. I didn't, The big reason I wasn't picking Reyes in this fight is just I had no idea, you know, dude beating, uh, oh, Jeremy Kimball and Ho Joaquin Christensen. It's just like, do you, can you finish people the way you have been at any level in the UFC? Or are you just going to be a dude whose game flies apart once you meet somebody who's got a decent chin? And this answers that question. It makes Reyes a real top prospect because the dude's obviously dangerous as hell. Yeah. Seven first round finishes? Or is it eight now? I think it's eight now. That's crazy. It's yeah. scary. And he called yeah. out Jordan Johnson, which I like. Yeah, that's that's a solid next step fight. Yeah, because he's undefeated too. So, yep. you know, it's like they're going to have to fight eventually. So Yeah, and Jordan Johnson also hasn't been looking like an electric talent that's charged up the division. I, I Normally I'd be like, don't put the prospects against each other. Let one of these – like let, bo let them both shine and run up the division. But I'll be like, yeah. Johnson, whatever. <laughs> if Reyes can be a real exciting force, I'll sacrifice anybody to that at light heavyweight. I don't care. Yeah, let's get him up there with the the everyone else that's really hittable and, and likes to take punches and see if they exactly. Can uh, for that, Guido Canetti beat Diego Rivas, and uh, this, was, this was a little bit of a bummer. Not because it was a really bad fight. It was back and forth and scrappy, and both guys landed shots and all that. But you could just so see that like the weight of fighting in front of a home crowd was just crushing Rebus. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's funny because I picked Kennedy going into this and as Rebus is walking out, I'm like, man, I kind of want Rebus to win now. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause it's like his hometown. He's the only, only native on the card. Like I, I started wanting him to win. People are going nuts. It turns out Kennedy yeah. said he was going to come in and colonize Chile with this win. And like, <laughs> Oh man, but like Revis just came out and did exactly what I thought it was he was gonna yep. do, and that is not enough. Yep. Like for being nicknamed the pit bull, this dude really isn't that aggressive or no, that much of a savage. He's definitely not the pit bull. He's yeah. Nah, he's like the border collie. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Like it will bite you, you know, <laughs> but it, it's not. But ain't uh, nobody fighting border collies out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be your first round draft pick. And that's for damn sure. Um, okay. But Kennedy did good, man. He he yeah. really, you know, in the face of being against the hometown fighter, getting booed religiously. I'm glad this wasn't a split decision because mm -hmm. I thought Kennedy really did enough to win. And I didn't want to see the home cooking kind of sway the judges. Um, but like, there were just so many times where Rivas just had too much momentum behind him in a transition that he got swept he got rolled over, giving Kennedy the top position. Like that happened a couple times. Like it was, it was like he was trying too hard at certain moments, and then he just couldn't put it together on the feet. Like he kind of turned it up there at the end and kind of went for it, but he just couldn't seem to do anything that that really hurt Kennedy in any kind of meaningful way. So no, I'm not even sure he won that third round. Like that was just a back and forth. He made the the third round just like a back and forth close round that you know. They both had some sub attempts. They both landed some strikes and eh, whatever. Yeah, but I'm definitely glad Kennedy won because he. I feel like he deserved it. I, oh yeah, I feel like he deserved the win. Just I'm, I'm a little sad that the guy, the one guy who really like had the crowd was showing up for, 
it didn't come close, really. Nah. <laughs> uh, before, before that, Andrea Lee beat Veronica Macedo. Workmanlike, solid win for Lee. Mostly, Macedo just really doesn't look ready to compete at this level. Not because she's not a bad athlete. Like, she landed that head kick in round two that, you know, had, had Lee badly hurt. But then it's just too much... J- jumping into the clinch when she doesn't know how to wrestle, being willing to pull guard and give up grappling positions to go for subs she's not going to get, not enough consistent striking offense anywhere, and Lee taking a reasonable decision just kind of by being the better fighter. Yeah, the better all-around fighter. Yep. Lee, she really showed some range here. Like, mm-hmm. she, obviously, you know, everyone talks about her stand-up, which actually really isn't that dangerous, if you ask me. I don't feel like it's particularly particularly venomous. She, um, she's technical, and she's got a little bit of power, but she's kind of slow, honestly. Yeah, like just, People can see her coming, so it's easier to brace for her shots, and she doesn't tend to catch people off guard. Yeah, it's um, she, it just seemed a little low in the power area. But, I mean, you know, she, she picked up a couple takedowns and hit some transitions and went for a couple submission attempts. So I mean, I liked seeing that from her. I thought it was yeah. it was nice to see a little bit of her tool shed because uh, I feel like this is someone not that they will, but it's someone the UFC could get behind. Oh yeah, you know, blonde no, boxer, got... you know, it, it's the mold. But yep. there's there's no such thing as promotion in the UFC anymore. No, I, I am still worried. The the one thing I'm still worried about with Lee is the fact that her offensive wrestling seems to get her in a lot of trouble. Like, like there was a point where she kind of. She went for a takedown on Macedo and just kind of got tied up, and Macedo just kind of pushed her over and ended up on top. And I've seen that happen to Lee in several fights where she's just she's really willing to wrestle, but doesn't really know how and kind of tries to just brute strength through people. So I still worry about that, but it, against a, an opponent like Macedo, it really just doesn't matter. Yeah, there's a little bit of Paige Van Zant in her for sure. Yeah, but it was it was you know a decent decent win for her though. Yeah, she'll be she she will be a a decent fun action fighter in the division no matter what. I, I'd still you know think that better schooled faster athletes up the division are going to be able to pick her off a bit. But um, she's, there are plenty of women in that in that division she can compete with and beat. So uh, before that, uh, Vicente Luque just absolutely drilled Chad Lapriz after. Not like neither guy really did anything for four minutes, and then it was just like, Here's a tiny left hook, fight over. I don't know. I feel like Luke was doing an excellent job of getting the timing of Laprise and just making Laprise uncomfortable with this constant forward pressure, a smooth and slick jab constantly over and over and over until Laprise finally went for something like just yeah. something and got fucking wrecked. There's that. It just it, it wasn't like nothing was really landing. I think was the thing. Like he was keeping the pressure on and he was showing the jab a lot. It's just no, nobody land. Like there was nothing. It's not the uh, what was it? It's not that um, Gabriel Benitez and Berto Abandoné fight earlier down the car where it's like 39 seconds. You're just like Jesus Christ. What? It's just like okay, they're feeling each other out and oh, the fight's over. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, it was real methodical. I felt yeah. like it was it was a really a technical performance by Luke here. I feel yeah. like he really played Laprise for a fool. Like that was this was really this was really smooth. I love the way Vicente fights. I absolutely yeah, yeah, love no. it. I mean, it's good to see him just be patient and pick his openings and get the win. Like on the so for the betting odds post on Bloody Elbow, I put for suggestions. I put Luke straight up at minus one ninety five. And I put him at inside the distance, but I feel like minus one ninety five is severely undervalued, whereas Laprise was like way overvalued because well, I don't know why, but perhaps because of getting too much credit for those that little winning streak he was on, which yeah, was really against some not good competition. I think it's also just too that if you look, if you're just looking at records, Luke's lost a lot of fights more than you would expect. But, like, before he got good, though. I, I know. I know it's a before he got good thing. I mean, I picked him, too. Uh, and, but it's just kind of a, you know, you if you're, if you're setting odds and all that, you're like, ah, I think Luke should win this. But 
he's lost a lot of fights that you would have expected that somebody as good as he is would would have won at the time. So I don't think he'll make that mistake again. Yeah, hopefully not. He looks great now. He's definitely tight, not tightening up his striking game. Well, no, I mean that's not. I mean, I hope they continue to make that mistake. Oh, like, oh you mean they, they hope? Yeah. Seeing him at, at those kind, that kind of value is is a good thing. Yeah. We'll see what he ta- what he gets next. Uh, unfortunately, being paid on this card, I don't think he's going to get a lot of big shine for it to get a bigger fight. But which he is had kind of work. bullshit because I mean that like he's finished his last last six wins have all been finishes. Yeah. Like this but dude's he a also killer. had that super tepid post fight call out where he's just like, "I'll fight anybody." Hoping he's too nice of a guy. Like I- I've spoken to him in the past. Like he's such a nice dude. And I know. Like, this dude's a fucking killer. It's like, yeah, this dude's a, he's a killer. Yeah. But I want to see him fight the Cowboys, Cerrone yeah. or Oliveira. That's what yeah. I'd definitely be down for that. You just got to you got to learn that lesson that like I mean, what like you can see it from like a Z- you know, Zabit with the uh, Yair where he calls out Yair Rodriguez, obviously Yair's been cut now, but like the next thing you hear is UFC's trying to make Zabit Magomed Cherpov versus Yair Rodriguez. You call out the right fighter and matchmakers will be like, oh, this guy wants this fight. We'll try to make it. Because, you know, they don't want to have to, like, turn to fighters and be like, would you take a fight with this person? <laughs> yeah. You know, here we've got four offers for me. Which one do you want? They want to be. They want to hear, like, oh, I want to fight this dude. And if it makes sense, they'll be like, great. Let's try to get that, that fight made, you know? Yeah, it's less paperwork for sure. It is. Uh, for that, Michelle Pizarris. Beat, beat Zach Cummings and uh, I, you know, kind of an impressive win for Prezeris. He showed up and showed that he could, that he can always fight smart against anyone at this point, that he can manage range and throw with power at 170 and all that, but also just kind of a terrible fight from Zach Cummings. He Cummings, he, he he has that two hundred five feel, you know. Yeah. It's like if you just look at him without anyone next to him, you're like, oh, he's a two hundred fiver, but he's he's not. He, he's he just seems too uncoordinated to be a one seventy er. Yeah, I, I think the thing what that really got exposed here is that he just has no range tools in his style. Like he's he's become a reasonable, decent, like busy boxer standing, a stiff one, but busy. <laughs> It's just it's very, a boxer very, without a jab. Very Pez dispensary. You know? Yeah. And with no jab and with no like real kicking game he can bank on. And so even like against the dude who's like three foot three foot eight, he's just like, Oh, I guess I gotta walk in on this guy and trade hooks with him. Hope that works. <laughs> Headbut- get headbutted a ton because yeah. I'm just moving in on a brick that's shorter than me. <laughs> He does look like a brick. He does. Dude. Oh shit. <laughs> absolutely just built like a cinder block. Oh man. So like the takeaways for me though were obviously Brazeris at 170 and how he would do against a true 170 er and that's what this was. Yep. And um uh, how much better his cardio would be, which seemed to be yep. a lot better. He wasn't he didn't seem too gassed there in the third, even though, you know, I think he, he did like Cummings into back into the fight a bit. Yeah, but he he's done a really good job, even at lightweight lately, of managing his cardio so that he can throw a lot late and all that. I, I think he's going right back to one fifty five after this. At least that's what he said. But he's just weirdly like you look at any one part of his game, and you're like, ah, he's fine. You know, he doesn't get a lot of subs. He doesn't knock many people out. He's not like a thrilling fighter anywhere. But he's kind of like Trinaldo become very patiently just like a really good hard to beat fighter. Really just solid smart. all around. And he yeah. doesn't he doesn't lose often. No. He's only I mean, dude beat Merrick Tysonov, you know? Which is crazy. It is. Man, I don't think it would go the same way if they fought again, but maybe not, but Merrick Tysonov doesn't have a fight, so <laughs> He's out he's about to uh fight Diego Sanchez in a grappling match. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> kind of sad. All right. Before that, Alexander Pantoja absolutely just pantsed Brandon Moreno in there. Yeah, that was cool. I, like I that. was shocked. I I expected Moreno's like improved fitness and cardio 
to make the same kind of busy war they had the first time, but for him to kind of pull it out as the fight went on. And Pantoja is just like, nah, I've learned a few tricks. I'm actually a much better striker now, and I'm just going to pick you off all fight. It's like Pantoja was like, I've seen, I've seen your bout with Sergio Pettis. Yeah. And then Moreno was like, I'm going to watch this bout with Sergio Pettis and fix nothing. Yeah. I'm going to fix nothing and go fight the same fucking way and expect different results. Yeah. I mean, it's more worrying to me that he just, he looks like a busier version of in better shape version of the guy that he was on tough. You know, it's the strikes is still loopy and wild. He still doesn't have any defense moving forwards or backwards. He is still, you know, the, his wrestling and grappling games are totally disconnected from his striking game. And it's just none of those pieces are coming together. Whereas you look at Pantoja and like in that fight he had with Moreno last time, he was walking Pant- Moreno down like he did this time, but he was getting hit every time Moreno came forward, got clipped hard a couple times, got taken down, got his back taken a couple times, all that. He comes out this time, every time Moreno steps forward, he's got a counter right, waiting right there for him. Every time he walks forward, he's moving his head offline so he doesn't get hit coming back. And it was just a much more complete striking performance from him. Man, he looks so sharp out there. Like, yeah. So much more technical. He fought smart. He mixed it up a bit. I mean, Moreno was in it, though. Like, he was, yeah. he was getting hit a lot, but and he was busted up, but he was swinging back, and yeah. he was never really out of the fight. He just couldn't no. hit Pantoja, and he was too hittable. He's tough. He's got a great chin. He's got great cardio, and he's got, you know, He's a scrappy fighter in the division. It's just none of the technique is following it. So if you have his number, like we saw in the Sergio Pettis fight, and like we saw, saw here, he can't do anything to change the course of that fight. Nope. Just hope to get lucky yep. in, in, in midst of the, the craziness of yep. the fights. For that, Pollyanna Botello beat Siri Kondo. And man, also speaking of fighters who are getting better a lot quicker than I thought they would. Yeah, this was awesome. You gotta love yeah. uh, the body kick. Boss Rudin yep. is somewhere smiling after this. Oh one. yeah, this was cool. The, the power liver shot. Botello Botello has always kind of struck me as a fighter who I. It seems like there's some idea of kickboxing in there, but it was all moving backwards and not sitting down on stuff, moving forwards, and that seems to be changing. You know, you got to give her credit. She stepped in with a powerful body kick and then followed it up with powerful shots afterward. If she can be that kind of aggressive athlete in that division, I mean, there there are fights to win at the bottom of it. She really reminds me of Amanda Nunes with the way she strikes. Like, just she hits so freaking hard. Yeah. And I, I actually think she hits harder than Andrea, Andrea Lee does. Oh, yeah. She's, at, at she's a much faster athlete. Just like clearly, like, on a, a bigger, a better hair trigger. Yeah, she's dangerous. She's definitely dangerous. She's probably like the the dark horse uh, as far as like dangerous strikers go. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's all about her technical game clicking and becoming less the fighter who backs up and does the wild swinging hooks with her chin in the air and more a fighter who asserts themselves going forward and can actually take over space in front of her. She's got the power to do it. Yep. Fastest finish in UFC strawweight history. Nice. It was a great fight, great performance from her. Tough loss for Kondo, and uh, hopefully she does. Kondo doesn't just become the next Siohi Ham, where she's just kind of a busy striker who's not physical enough to compete with that division. I don't know. That's the that's like the the Achilles heel for that division. Like if yeah. you can't strike, you're not going to make it very far. Let's see. Before that, Gabriel Benitez beat Umberto Bandene. Man, that was a great fight. Yeah, this was crazy. <laughs> Two momentum swings in 39 seconds. This was insane, dude. Uh, <laughs> Benitez comes out, lands his crazy uppercut, drops Bandene, goes in for the kill. Bandene locks up an arm bar, and Benitez fucking just spikes his ass. He picks him up, slams him, and I think, uh, I think Bandene was unconscious at point of impact. Like, oh, yeah. He lost consciousness. Because, like, when he slammed him, he had his hand right on his jaw. So, yeah. like, all that force was coming down right on the jaw. 
couple follow up strikes, and it was a fucking wrap. What a cool knockout! Yeah, fantastic fight. I mean, because like you see Benita as he's going in, he lands that huge uppercut to hook. It was even I think he, he hit him twice on the way down and head butted him. So you, you know, Bandai is like super rocked going down, and he dives in and. Band aid throws up that arm bar, and you just see in your head, you're just like, he's gonna fucking get this arm bar. It was tight. It looked tight, it looked deep. And then Benitez just picked him up and slammed him on his head, and you could see his head just bounce off the mat, and you're like, ah, that's that looks so nasty. Super fun, super fun fight. That's like shit you see on the regional scene. Yeah. You don't see that in, in the UFC. Well, and that's that's what I mean with the card like this. You get you get a guy like Humberto Bandane. You're gonna get KOs like you see on the regional scene because you know, dude's been fighting nobody but cans his whole career and he doesn't really know the dynamics of a big tough fight. So, Man, this was so gnarly, <laughs> so it devastating. It was super fun. And just for a quick stat, you could have watched that fight 30 times over before they got to Pollyanna Patello versus Siri Kondo. <laughs> and then watch that fight 30 times, 40 times over but before they got to Alexandra Pantoja versus Brandon Moreno. Which I was cool with. I like the breaks. Yes. It gives me a chance to step away from the computer and you know rest my eyes for a second. Mm -hmm. Maybe get some food. All right. For that, Frankie Signs beat Enrique Briones in a reasonable fight that most people thought Frankie oh, Sainz We skipped win. over Enrique Barzola defeating Brandon Davis. Oh, that's right. Enrique Barzola beat Brandon All Davis. All these names look the same, don't they? If you just kind of haze over the, who's fighting. Well, you know, it's my, Biden, it's my Barzola, like, Brandon. handicap <laughs> coming into play again. I'm just like, well, these all these Latinos, it's just... <laughs> we done did this Jose one here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. Sorry. Okay. Apologies to Enrique Barzola, who I like a lot, but uh, he he put on a dominating performance against Brandon Davis, man. Exactly. Yeah. Enrique Barzola, NCAA Division One All American wrestler. Enrique Barzola, what? He's not. Is he Peruvian Dagestani? wrestling champ? Is he Dagestani? Like what that's right. That? How does where does this wrestling pedigree come from? Come from he... it, it's mountain people. I mean, Dagestan. Freaking, you know, Peru. It's just, it's something to do with elevation. It has to be, man, because this is insane. Like that rinse and repeat style he just deployed. Mm -hmm. Like that was beautiful. That was like, yep. he's good at it. Like he is really good oh, at yeah. it. John that's Fitch does it. It's boring. Enrique Barzola does it. That's fun. There, there was a really, really pretty moment late in that fight where Davis reached down for a single leg. Barzola gets the front headlock. Uses that to break it, the the single leg down and just snaps Bart snap Davis to the mat and then took his back and he just like that's just like a pretty pretty gorgeous fucking textbook NCAA kind of snap down takedown. Dude, he's so good. He's in. It's so just not what you would expect when you look at him. He's no. Like, oh, he's obviously going to come out and to bite down on his mouthpiece and start swinging wild hooks. But now he's coming to fucking change levels and put you on your ass and then make you carry his weight and then let you up just so he can take you right back down again and then carry his weight some more. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for Brandon Davis, though, because he's got a super entertaining style that is incredibly limited by the fact that you really have to fight exactly his fight for him to, to win. Like, if you're not willing to stand right in front of Brandon Davis and be like, let's just kickbox for, like, 15 minutes face-to-face... There's a good chance you're going to beat Brandon Davis. There's but plenty of guys that will that'll fight that way for him. But yeah. he's not going to climb the ladder doing that. No. He's got, he's got to get more urgent in wrestling exchanges. I saw that going into this fight where it's just like, he gets body locked, he doesn't hand fight, and what he often does to fight a takedown is he'll turn, give up his back, and then put his hands on the mat so that he's harder to, it's harder to lift him up. But it's also just like you're just conceding all offense and position. And Barzola, then he can just trip a leg. He can just drag you backwards. He can just ride you there and throw knees to your body and legs. Like you are conceding every ability for your opponent to get done, whatever he wants to get done at that point. And 
you can't do that against a guy like Enrique Barzola. Yeah, man. What an awesome fight with Barzola. Yeah. And I just don't know why it's so much more entertaining when he does it versus when John Fitch does it. It's just it, it's just so much more entertaining. He yeah, was slamming uh-huh. the dude, though. He, he got a couple slams in there, which was cool. Yeah, and he called out the beat. And, you know, I don't think he'd win he that fight. translated, by the way, but yeah. yeah. I don't think he'd win that fight, but I'd watch it. I mean, dude's five and one in the UFC could easily be six and zero. Oh, and- Anytime anyone calls out someone like that, though, like anyone that, like you know, you have these hyped up prospects. Yeah, you know, some people duck him, but like he's just like fuck that shit. I'm gonna put this dude on his back. All that yeah. fancy spinning stuff, nah, 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 nah. I'm the real Dagestani in here. Exactly. Uh, he's he's <laughs> he's got enough wins to earn the shot. It, you know, he's. He's not old, but he's 29, and he's been doing this since 2012. Like, fucking let him take his shot. Let him see if he can beat a real top a real top prospect who looks like they're a future contender in the division. If he can't, then he goes back to the drawing board. Like, it's not like this dude's on his way. To, like, the UFC's going to be out there pushing this dude to superstar him, where it's like, oh, yeah, no, if he slow builds, maybe in five years he can be like Darren Elkins and the UFC just being like, yeah, those wins are great and we're never giving you a title shot, Darren. Here, fight some other guy that we've never heard of. And yeah, But you know what? Barzola's style is is a killer. It, like That's, that's a trap fight for anybody. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to see him take on any big fight they can throw at him. So hopefully he gets, if not Zabit, somebody else that's fun and on a run and looks like they're – already a top, or, you know, like burgeoning contender in that division. And like he fights to his body style, yeah. which I love to see. Like he, he looks like he's a wrestler and he, he fulfills the prophecy. So now we get to Frankie Signs versus Enrique Briones. And yeah. uh, just a solid win for Frankie Signs in a fight he had every right to win by being the much better wrestler and much better athlete. <laughs> I just think the much better fighter all around also. Yeah. I mean, he was mixing up his striking in with his takedowns, even had some go-tos for when his takedowns didn't work. Like he had nice dirty boxing and nice knees to the midsection. Like as the takedown fails, he transitions right into the striking. Um, and all while pushing the same sort of pace for three rounds, which is also cool and good to see. So yeah, definitely a solid win here. Uh, even a uh, thirty twenty six on one of the judges' scorecards, so pretty freaking dominant. And uh, Briones, he just didn't really, you know, he was just like a step behind the whole time, and just didn't have enough things to do in each moment to to come out on top. Yeah, and well, I think it's pretty telling too that I mean, signs like his the thing that he keeps running into is a problem for him going forward. Is that whenever he was strikes, it's always like leap in with a couple of hard power shots, full speed that after a while people really pick up on. You could see Briones after like near the end of the first round and going into the second was just starting to pick signs off all the time. Every time he came in, starting to counter him and find hard counters. But the fact that signs is just faster and stronger, like eventually he was able to leap in like that and just hit him hard enough to hurt him badly. And from there on, you can kind of create the own your own new course of the fight without necessarily having to be the cleaner puncher. And, you know, that kind of athleticism matters at some point. Yeah, and Sainz is a, is a damn good athlete. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's nice to see him with this all-around game that he showed up yeah. with. But, like, I don't think he's going to get any better than this. Oh, well, no, he's, he's like, 37. I mean, dude. This is, like, play. full, full, he's in full force right now. Yeah, th- this is... You could argue that Frankie Sign's fight with Uriah Faber was probably his bet, like his pinnacle, and anything we're seeing after that is just like, yeah, he's you know he's still got a lot left for a lot of other dudes in the division, but uh, he's, 30, he's getting near forty, like at one hundred and thirty-five pounds. That's you know, time waits for no man. And before that, start out the card: Claudio Puelles beat Felipe Silva. And, man, I don't know if Puelles is just a magician and we should all be like, what the, you know, that is amazing. I don't know if Felipe Silva is just an idiot and we just got to be like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Like, I have no idea how Puelles won this fight. He was dead. He 
he was th- – there were points where he just dropped with his hands over his head and he's, like, rolling on the canvas. And you're like, somebody stop this fight. What does the ref want to see? I, I think uh, Silva, he actually went to the school of uh, – he went to uh, Luke Sanders' school of botching fights. <laughs> That's what he did. He was like, how can I – I'm dominating this fight. How can I fuck it up for myself? I know. You know how I was like refusing to go to the ground with this guy and was forcing him to stand? I'm just going to stop that and just engage on the ground with him. And, you know. But when he did, Puelas was dead. And it's not even like he like really fucked up with position on the ground. He was holding him down in the right spot. It just, Puelas kept rolling for that knee bar and he fucking got it. And it's just. Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Jiu Jitsu is real, my friend. <laughs> It, it was, if nothing else, it was a really fun fight between two dudes that at this point I have no expectations for going forward. It's just like, hey, you know, that's like a, a career moment for Claudio Puelas, who otherwise looks totally unready to face UFC level competition. Yeah. And the crazy thing is they probably could have stopped the fight multiple times. Oh, yeah. In, in favor of Silva because he was tagging this dude so much. Yeah. No, like I said, Puelas was going down, shelling with his hands over his face, not defending himself at all. Like, there was every reason to stop this fight. You go, you know, you look at freaking Jared Cannonier getting stopped later, and, like, he face-planted for a second, but then he's right back up and, like, moving around. And, you know, like, I, I'm I'm not sad that the, that the ref stopped that fight, but these are, you know... <laughs> He blew it. He fucking yeah. blew it. He was doing so well. He was like fucking this dude up. He had this fight won and was like, you know what? I don't want my win bonus. I, <laughs> fuck that. How can I take this out? Oh, That's man. Insane, man. But what a beautiful submission. I love yeah. knee bars, number one. And I love like knee bars when they come out of nowhere. Yep. Like that Luke Sanders, Erie Alcantara one. Like that's, yep. that's some freaking sweet shit. Or like when Paul Craig, he picked up this arm bar submission. Oh, God, yeah. Like a Hail Mary arm bar recently. And I just, I love when, when submissions work that way. Because yeah. like you hear it all the time. Oh, you know, you got to go out and, and finish. You got to get that knockout punch. And it's like, well, sometimes you have to get that, you know, Hail Mary submission also. So, yeah. Cool. It, like I say, it's a, it's a, it's like it might be a career moment for Claudio Puella. It's the kind of thing that he, he may never recapture, but he'll always have that miracle knee bar, and you know, that's not nothing. It's something he can build a, a career of doing knee bar seminars now. Yeah, that's right. So. He'd be like, okay, get shit kicked for fifteen <laughs> minutes, and then roll this way, and you got it. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Him and uh, him and Yuri can team up and, and travel yeah. and take over. Long story short, fun card and moments. Not everything was thrilling. Main event was poor. Like if you missed this card, you didn't miss any miracles. You didn't miss anything. Well, you like didn't a- miss a miracle actually. You missed a legitimate miracle. That knee bar was definitely a miracle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Outside of that. Yeah. You, you, outside of that, though, like it's a solid night that put put several fighters on a path to better things, to bigger things, and to fights that matter more. And, and I think the best thing is if if you didn't watch the card, the fight's worth watching end really quick, anyways. Yeah, so you can go back it and really, they're probably all on no. Twitter. Like round one, round one stoppage, round one stoppage, couple decisions you don't need to care about, round one stoppage. Couple decisions you need to care about. Two more round one stoppages, and then that one third round stoppage. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll be back next week for another card that looks shockingly similar in terms of talent disparity and a main event that should actually pay off quite a bit more, unless Till and Wonder Boy both decide that they want to pressure counter. And- <laughs> <laughs> That's an early card, right? Or a Sunday card too? Is it? All right, I haven't even looked. Yeah, I think it's a it's an early card on Sunday. But it's otherwise, yeah, we're kind of in the middle of a stretch here with UFC fight nights that are just like, eh, it might be, show up if you want to, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, um, we have a roster and these guys have to fight. So Any, anyway, 
on that note, you can find me on Twitter at these anytime. You can find Eddie on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. You can find both of us over at bloodyelbow.com all the rest of the week. Give us a like over on YouTube down there. Thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, MMANation.com, D-O-T-C-O-M, all spelled out. That's where you find all the latest Bloody Elbow shows, videos, analysis, all the stuff we do week in, week out. We will be back with uh, Care Don't Care, If I Did It, Heavy Hands, Vivisection, all that going into UFC Liverpool next week. So thanks everyone for tuning in, and we will be back soon.